If your color space transform is at the start of your node tree going from camera lock to Rec. 709, you're defeating the whole purpose of shooting in lock in the first place. Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and in this video, it might sound a little bit basic, but I still see a lot of people doing this, which is to put your CST or color space transform at the start of the node tree. I think this is because most of you, or maybe the beginners out there, they are sort of thinking in the process of how the grading process is, which is going from camera lock to color management which is to convert lock to rec 9 and then you do your color correction then only you do your color grading but when we are grading we shouldn't go by that process because we have to analyze how the signal is being perceived and transform down the line so i have a clip here which was shot on sony s lock 3 if i bypass my grade you can see that this is the lock state and this is the rec 9 so i'm doing this with a cst node going from the color space S Gamma 3 Cine into output Rec 709. So using this logic in the CSC, whatever is before the CSC or upstream of this is in a Sony S Gamma 3 Cine color space. And whatever goes downstream is in Rec 709. And you can imagine the color space being compressed such as I have my scope here showing the CIE chromacity. So the S Gamma 3 Cine color space, it's huge. It's covering everything in the Rec. 709 color space, which is this small triangular over here. So we have to convert this footage from log to Rec. 709 because Rec. 709 is a display color space which can map or display the colors accurately. And you will find most of the displays out there are in either Rec. 709 or sRGB. So in order for us to actually see what we are working with, we have to use the CST to convert this from S Gamma 3 Cine to Rec. 709. But when we are working, we don't want to be working in the smaller color space such as a Rec. 709, which is downstream of the CST. We want to be working in the wider color space, which is S Gamma 3 Cine. And one of the reason is because we have more steps. We can fine tune stuff better when we are in a wider color space. So let me demonstrate to you how working upstream the CST will benefit you in terms of dynamic range and also color depth. So if I create a node upstream such as this using Shift S and I go to my gain and I lift it up. So you see that it won't get burst so easily in terms of the highlights on her face. If you compare this and copy this over to the node behind, I'm going to boost it up even more. So if you compare both of the images, this one is upstream and this is downstream. I can also put it side by side, images, full screen. So this is downstream and this is upstream. So you can see that it's so much smoother when you're doing things downstream compared to upstream of the CSD because this is working in Rec. 709, which is a very confined color space. It's smaller than the working color space of S Gamma 3 Cine. So we get these burst out colors a lot faster than we would on the wider color space. So I'm not going to comment on which one looks better as of now, but working in a wider color space will give you more versatility and it won't break the footage that easily. So does that mean that the CSC must always sit down the line, downstream of your node tree? Not always. There are cases where the CSC will be the first for example, if you're using a DaVinci White Gamut working color space, you can watch it in this video. I break down how you can use DaVinci White Gamut. Or if you're really not sure how to position your node tree in a proper way, what I can suggest is I have my visionary power grades, which comes in a beginner. So I have the whole node tree mapped out for you. And my CST is basically this ODT, which is an output device transform. You can go from whatever log camera you're going to. Rec. 709. And this CST is located here so that whatever works upstream is in a lock color space and downstream is only things that are meant for Rec. 709. So I also have the advanced node tree, which we have the ODT over here, and the pro node tree, which we have the ODT right here. And the pro node tree is using the Winchy White Gamut. That's why we have an IDT 
with a CST and you can map whatever log camera into the Vinci Wright gamut so that everything in the middle here is working in the Vinci Wright gamut. So if you'd like to know more about these power grades, you can watch this video right here. And that's it for this video today. I hope you found something useful. Please drop a like and subscribe to watch more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.